Hey guys, I'm Soren. And I'm Mary. And welcome to Witticism. Here's what's going on this week in world news. People are pumped this week for Sunday night's lunar eclipse. A rare eclipse which causes the moon to turn red, often referred to as a blood moon, it occurs once every 18 years and must have been a spectacular view for the people in China because the only thing most of America saw last night was Mother Nature's middle finger, an endless barrage of clouds. Despite this letdown, there are a few people meandering around outside in an attempt to get a picture of the blood moon, only to have their friends say, dude, your phone is from like the 90s, just forget about it. Move over, Satan. There's a new demonic idol to worship, and his name is Nicolas Cage. One school recently discovered their locker room to have been decorated with satanic symbols and a spray-painted pentagram centering a shrine to psychotic actor Nicolas Cage. The shrine contained rose petals, candles, Drano, and a picture of a shirtless Nicolas Cage. The incident has been referred favorably labeled as the Rage Cage in relation to the messages in red spray paint reading various movie quotes like, I'm going to steal the declaration and bees. The cage worshiper responsible for this remains unknown, and various school and baseball members question as to why anyone would have done this. Um, really? You find it that unbelievable? Are you aware that in asking the question why, you can narrow it down to nearly every teenager on the planet, or at least in your school? Frankly, I'm surprised that there's been only one known try to the glorious cage, as his, over, as his own special brand of overacting has managed to win him a place in the hearts of virtually everyone who has seen him in action. Give up on finding out just who did it. You won't know until they're dead and their tombstone reads, I'm with you at last, dear Nikki, my soul's eternal cage. The White House cl recently claimed that they did not block 13-year-old conservative activist C.J. Pearson on Twitter after he criticized Obama's decision to bring 14-year-old Muhammad to the White House to view his clock after Muhammad was arrested because police suspected it was a bomb. Pearson took a screenshot of the picture that says he is blocked from viewing the president's tweets and uploaded it to Twitter. Frank Bonetti responded with public service announcement, nobody is or ever has been blocked from at POTUS. Twitter account. Pearson then responded with a video saying how nobody will ever believe the government, blah blah blah, it's not important. To me it just sounds like someone is a bitter little drama queen who is upset that nobody was paying attention to him. Maybe you can try your luck building a Lego house or something. Spider a la flambe, anyone? A man spotted a spider on his car and decided the appropriate response was not to sensibly run away screaming, but to set the spider on fire while at a gas station. Predictably, the flames quickly spread and set the station on fire. Luckily, the fire was quickly put out by an employee, and the only notable damage was to the spider slayer's car and, obviously, the spider. The man was embarrassed by his lack of judgment and apologized profusely to the workers at the gas station. But his recent blunder is actually the peak of this month's spider-related news. In conjunction with a woman who abandoned her car when she saw a spider on her shoulder, and a fiasco where a tarantula escaped containment while on a plane. This begs the question, have spiders become aware of their ability to cause stupidity in human beings? And are all these recent fiascos actually part of a new reality show produced by spiders for spiders? We don't know, but have amused co-workers of a local gas station are certainly enjoying the security footage. It was reported the next night that soft forlorn music could be heard coming from the scene of the crime, and upon investigation, a small gathering of spiders could be seen surrounding the message, Rest in peace, Papa Joe. You were not meant for this world. The hookup app Tinder is outraged that the AIDS Healthcare Foundation has created a billboard encouraging users of the app to get tested for STDs. Tinder sent a letter to the company demanding they remove all references from their app and to stop making false statements about them. Oh, please. The only false statement that has ever been made about Tinder as anyone who has said, I'm not looking to just hook up while using Tinder. In more serious news, a Carlsbad, New Mexico man was ba -da -ba -ba -ba, not loving it when his local McDonald's wronged him by putting pickles on his sandwich. The unnamed Carlsbad man reportedly began to scream, harass employees, and throw things from the restaurant's counters after making his discovery. Now, no one can blame this man for being 
passionate about his burgers. But at a certain point, doesn't it just seem like it would be a lot less work and a lot more sense to just pick the pickles off? Come on, man, control yourself. With how much McDonald's this man must eat, I'm surprised he even had the energy to walk to the front of the store and complain, let alone trash the whole place. Police were soon called to the scene to stop the public disturbance, but let the man go with a verbal warming, presumably out of pity. Think you've had a bad day? Try this on for size. Kenyan runner Alid Kipchog missed out on beating the world's record for fastest time ever in the Berlin, Berlin Marathon this week by only 63 seconds, and this time he can actually blame it on the shoes. The runner's specialized prototype shoes that Nike had created for him just began to fall apart after 10 miles of the 26 mile race, leaving him bleeding with blisters and cuts on his feet by the time he finished. That being said, Kipchog still won the race with an impressive time of two hours and four minutes. Begging the question, where the hell were all the other runners? I mean, this guy ran more than half the race with his shoes coming apart and his feet literally bleeding. And not one of the other runners were able to keep up with him what could possibly be their excuse? Oh, my legs are tired. Sounds like a cop out and a half to me. My God, I imagine walking a mile, I can't imagine walking a mile in his shoes, let alone running for 16. Oh, Nike, next time you know one of your runners is going for a world record, you might want to give some super glue a try. If you can't keep your strings tied and your shoes clean, you're lucky Kip Chog's a straight-laced straight guy, or he might have said, so long, and given you the boot. So a recent report has said that more people have died this year from taking selfies than shark attacks. According to BBC News, a man fell to his death while posing for a selfie at the Taj Mahal's Royal Gate. Sadly, he wasn't the only one. In a recent report by Mashable, 12 people have died this year from capturing the ever so compelling image known as a selfie in comparison to a report done by Condé Nast Traveler who reported eight fatalities due to shark attacks. I guess, as a nation, we have learned a million likes from a selfie on Instagram is far more important than a life. America. That's all the time we have for today. Here's what's going on in Hollywood. The Career Development Center, they've helped me with my internship, being able to market myself, just being able to package myself the right way in order to land a job that will be secure. I um, had the ability to sharpen my resume skills, and my resume is beautiful, and I think anyone in the communications department will definitely agree that their resume is probably top of the line. I'm Cassie. I'm Nadir. I'm Sam. And I'm Vicky. And here's what's happening in entertainment news. The beautiful Baywatch star, Pamela Anderson, recently opened up in an interview with Willie Geis about why she had kept her two gorgeous sons, Dylan and Brandon, out of the limelight. She told Geis that she constantly tells her sons, you're gorgeous, you're talented, now let's work on the humbleness and education. I'm sure that's the exact advice Hugh Hefner gave her once upon a time as well. But I guess she has bigger dreams for her two sons than just sex, drugs, and butt plugs. So what do you guys think about Pamela Anderson keeping her kids out of the limelight? Go ahead. I mean, it seems like the best option for them. You think so? Yeah, because her, they're, she's famous. You have to be famous. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, there's no point in having a whole famous family. Uh -huh. I agree. I think, I think it definitely, I think it, it sh they sh she should keep him out of the limelight. I, I mean, agree with that. Look how Pamela Anderson kind of turned out. Who was she with? Who, um, Tommy. Kit, Tommy. Kid Rock, and then she had kids with Tommy. Yeah, so like, and look how that kind of turned out. Mm -hmm. She was like, oh, that wasn't good for a while there, so I'm glad that she's doing that. I would want to be like kept out of the limelight. Mm -hmm. Like, my mom, well, not my mom, but if I was in that situation, <laughs> my mom would be a porn star. Like, I don't want that <laughs> whole thing like coming back on me. Like, oh, you're the child of a porn star. Like, 
Yeah. That's not fun. I feel like she also maybe did that because of it. Like, yeah. I think right. she thought yeah. about that. And maybe exactly, that's the yeah. reason why she kept her kids out of the spot. Like, just so, to yeah. keep them, like, somewhat protective, which I can, like, I totally respect. Yeah, I respect so, that, too. Yeah. Definitely. I think that's actually a really good option. Yeah. Proud of her. Yes. Yeah, I'm Home proud girl. of her, too. I think that's pretty good. We just have to get the powers to actually do it. Will there be a re return of everyone's favorite twosome and their overbearing neighbor? Or is this just an interview getting our hopes up? With now being the time for the return of 90s, it looks like the sixth season wonder needs to act fast to make its comeback, or it'll stay in the 90s graveyard forever. What are some uh, TV shows from the 90s that you guys want to see come back? <sighs> God, what were you guys saying? Yeah. Yeah. So Saved by the Bell. I'm so ready for that. Saved by the Bell. I'm ready for Boy Meets World. I don't like Girl Meets World. I <laughs> oh, love that was Boy, Meets World. Boy Meets World. I don't think that should be considered... Um, like that coming back mm -hmm. because yeah. it's completely it's different. It has completely. the dynamic is one hundred and ten percent different. It's mm -hmm. totally like tween twelve year olds. Yeah. yeah, and I enjoy Boy Meets World, and I'm twenty, so I want to <laughs> I want to like enjoy yeah. that again, just yeah. like that. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Fresh Prince, that's Fresh Prince. Fresh oh. Prince. The thing is, though, I don't Love. think anybody can play Will as Will's best character. as Will. Yeah, that is true. true. I don't know. I th yeah, all those characters are pretty well cast. Yeah. Uh, another one I'd like to see is uh, Friends. Friends. Oh, I, I love Friends. I love mm -hmm. Seinfeld too. Oh. Um, Seinfeld would actually be Spin perfect. City? Spin City. Spin City. Spin City. Yeah, it's not, that's not bad. It's not, that's not bad. Yeah. It's not up there with, uh, with yeah. I think si Seinfeld or Friends, but you know, it's not not bad. I think yeah. that'd be a pretty good one to come back to. But I definitely I would love to see Monica, Chandler, Joey, and all them <laughs> yeah. get back together. You know, Rachel. Yeah, it's Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, I obviously like, want to see her again. That'd later be in life, cool. everybody yeah. does. She's I so think, pretty. I think that'd be pretty good. To see that. So. Yeah, Absolutely. I like it. Yeah. Woo! All right. Well, here's the scoop on Hollywood's couple scene. Kate Hudson was recently seen with pop artist Nick Jonas despite their 45 age, year age difference. The two were caught canoodling, first at Disney World, then in Miami, having brunch the next morning. However, two, ah, the two want to assure us they're absolutely not dating. Kate was just making a little extra cash babysitting for the weekend. So uh, what are you guys' thoughts on the new couple? I think that she should let us have Nick Jonas. Like, she's a little uh, too old. Yeah. Like, you can go after Brad Pitt. Like, you got Johnny Depp Brad and Pitt's everyone. Taken. Brad let Pitt's us, taken. Let us have Nick. 40, Just, it's not really 45 years difference, right? No. It's a, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, like, there's no way she's, like, in her 60s. Confused. Okay. I, I think uh, they should... Yeah. Hey, go <laughs> Nick, hey, go Nick Jonas. You I was know just gonna say I mean? that. Yeah. She's hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Over she 18, is a pretty age is woman. But a number. Yeah. Age is just a number. That's right. That is that is totally true, viewers. Age is just a number. Just make sure she's over 18. 18 or up. Yep. There you yeah. go. But no, Nick Jonas. I mean, I I like I, what were we talking about? Uh, Joe Dude, Jonas last, last week. week. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. on, Joe. Yeah. Now look at Nick, man. This he's just making more headlines. He's I think just going. Joe is not gonna know what to do. <laughs> yeah. He's not gonna know what to do after this, and he's that's not that home. good. <laughs> Nick's this. He's Another gonna, one is that. He's gonna be so upset with this. He is. He's yeah. gonna be like, wow, my brother just always takes over. He so always, annoying. He always Whatever happened to Kevin? Him. Wasn't there a Kevin? He's, he's married. He's, and he's just kids. married. Oh, like bye, boy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, in other couple news, the Big Bang Theory actress Kaylee Cuco and her sweet thing Ryan Sweeting have split. After just two years of marriage, the lovebirds were very openly affectionate about one another, but the sudden split leaves us to believe there was trouble in paradise. One source claims Sweeting was addicted to painkillers and alcohol, which, in order to watch the actual, uh, and actually enjoy the Big Bang Theory, we don't really blame him. Kaylee's been surrounded by geeks for over eight years. You'd think she'd be smart enough not to marry a guy she only knew for three months. What do you guys think of the split? Do you think it's possible to have a lasting relationship with someone you have only known for a few months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You nope. don't even know nope. them. Yeah. That's true. You don't even know how like they act in the house. Yeah, like, exactly. Like if they leave the toilet seat up, uh, like you don't know. <laughs> Three months, like honestly, I don't even own like a pair of shoes for that long before I toss them. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I think I've had these things for you know a little like three months. I think what? I've, I've kept Easy. them. They're actually, good shape. I've had these for a while, but these are like ready to. Ready to ready go. go. They're ready to just be um, thrown yeah. out. You already so. got the papers ready for the divorce? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sign yeah. that right now. Which I also feel like getting a divorce is so much like more hassle. Like, why wouldn't you Ooh. just maybe like wait it out, see if you actually like yeah. want to like Yeah. Get it is married. a hassle, but I feel like nowadays it's so easy to get a divorce. Like, people don't even want to work through their problems. They just want to be like, okay, bye, like, mm. see you later. I mean, it's so better true. to get it done early rather than you got kids and that they get in the way. Yeah. I hate when people like 
know they have problems and then they have a child and it's like why why would you yeah, do why that why would you do that yeah That's i for, just like child oh, i just saw kaylee kuko then sweeting at uh on the jimmy fallon show not too long ago and i was like oh you know that sucks that she's married <laughs> i was thinking <laughs> that i really was but then all of a sudden now she's you know, now she's back in the hey, uh -oh. she's back in the game, uh -oh. mm -hmm. and I'm looking. Looking, I'm late. <laughs> I'm looking, Kaylee Kuko. I am looking. No, but Big Bang Theory, though, to be all honest, mm -hmm. uh, that's a show that could just uh, die out. Just yeah. Like those ninety shows. My parents we're love about. it, but sorry, mom and dad, I just feel like their sense of humor is not like. Not too good. Yeah. I think yeah. it's either you really like it or you just don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree, I agree with that. With that. Mm -hmm. ABC Family has picked up a comedy with singer-rapper Nicki Minaj as the executive producer. The half-hour single-camera comedy is based on Nikki and her family's immigration from Trinidad to the United States in the early 90s. The series will focus on her growing up in Queens and lead into her evolution of international fame. It's funny that ABC would pick up such a comedy series about Nicki Minaj's life when her father was a drug addict who tried to kill her mom and also burn her childhood house to the ground. But if you can find the humor in that, then more power to you, ABC. Will you guys be tuning in to Nikki's uh, new show? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. I might watch one episode just to see how stupid it is. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's going to be the New Jersey Shore. Pretty, mm, it's going to be the New right. Jersey Shore. And it's just, I, I just don't think that journey would be a comedy. It, yeah. uh, that's well, exactly you're, right. Like, my, like, immigrating from a bad country to, like, I just feel like that's just, like, a serious thing that oh, yeah. should not mm -hmm. be made into a comedy. But like, her dad was a drug addict. Like, I don't, like, what, where do you find the humor in that? Like, I don't understand. And then, like, he tried to kill her mother. Yeah, it's which is serious. also, oh. that's, like, serious, a big issue. Yeah. That's, like, not funny. And also, like, didn't she do, like, underground, like, rap battles? Like, how are you going to, like, Make that funny. portray that? Like, don't people, like, get shot and stuff? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean have I, you ever never, seen I've never been to one, so, I mean, I wouldn't know for sure. But I definitely uh, don't know that for sure, but. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Don't know. I don't, it's I pretty don't. intense. I go to them regularly. Really? Like, yeah, on, the, on the regular? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You seem like you'd, you'd go to, yeah. He's like, look at Do you rap there? Um. Sometimes. Is it like the pitch perfect rat battles when they're in that big empty swimming no. pool? No. Mm, it's yeah, like right. a butt a bath. Like it's Ooh. intense. Yeah. It's People crazy. like bring weapons and stuff. And they're like, if they don't like you, they're just gonna murder you with their lyrics. That's they're gonna offer. murder with your lyrics. <laughs> 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 Where do you think I'm going after this? Oh, true. Oh. True. It is homecoming, so <laughs> right. it'll be. There you go. But well, fashion designer Ralph Lauren has decided to step up from his position of CEO of his fashion company, but will remain on board still as a designer. This is to, be, to believe to be financially motivated to bring up sales. He is being replaced by Stefan Larson, who has worked as an H&M executive and is currently the head of Gap and Old Navy's Down Market brand, which he is cre credited with rebranding and making extremely profitable. Ralph Lauren said he is still going to be the designer and see this as a new partnership. I don't know, it sounds like a downgrade. What do you guys think? Would you say a job just for that to uh, for your company that you started? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I can understand why he's backing down. Yeah. Yeah, based off of like the publicity and like just the bad stuff he's been saying. Uh -huh. So it's like, okay, you're doing the right thing. You're still in the company, but yeah, it's not that bad. He's yeah, already I would, rich. I like, still want to be in charge. Like I wouldn't want to let that go. I, mean, yeah. I feel like that'd be so hard because that's like, it's your name. Yeah. Okay. Like that Definitely. is your name on that brand. Right. So I feel like. For me personally, I wouldn't. I would if I made a clothing brand. I would. It would be so hard for me to like let go of that, like some right, sort of control. Like yeah. Oh yeah. Your life. So, exactly. Yeah, I agree. I would definitely not want to lose control of that. I mean, but you know, hey, yeah. hey, that's all. That's Every, all I can everything say. Comes to everything comes to an end. It has to happen. Has to all happen. All good things come to He's an end. He's pretty old, isn't he? Too. I'd imagine. I'd imagine. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Sorry if you're not. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> but you might be. He stays behind the scenes mostly, so. Yes, mm -hmm. you don't see him too much. But. Yeah, that's true. You just see the horse. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. But uh, Matthew McConaughey's older brother, who is also known as Rooster, seems to be making all the right decisions lately. Uh, it's being reported that he was given a free Miller Lite for a year after he named his new baby Miller Lite. Uh, this seems accurate considering the only way most people would ever drink Miller Lite would be if it was given to them for free. Also, with anyone ask, uh, the names of my children are Dunkin' Donuts and iPhone Success. Do you guys think it's tacky to name your child after products like this, or is this your product names that normal? Like, do you think it's cool? No. 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 Yeah. Do you know what I say to it? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I say, I say, keep it going, keep the products going. Hey, 
It's free publicity for life for those companies. That those is. companies yeah. would probably love it. It's such a high profile, like Matthew McConaughey, yeah. his brother Rooster, but I mean, still McConaughey, so that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Rooster's just living. Rooster like is living. think about the child. Hi. Miller Lite in class today? Hey. I think he'd be the popular, <laughs> most popular kid in school if you ask me. Miller Lite? Yeah, I mean, maybe once he gets older, where yeah. people actually like, oh, Miller Lay, like your name's yeah, awesome. That'd but be like, cool. when you're like seven, Six. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, it's kind of a little. It's little, a little. I'd, it's Miller, please. It's Miller. Miller. <laughs> All right, that's what I would do. But uh, if I if I could name my kid after anything, I think it'd be. It might be chalkboard. 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 I like chalkboards mm. or an easy board. What are those things that smart in high school? Oh, smart board. I'm gonna board, name it yeah. smartboard board. Oh, uh, so Kaylee Kuko, <laughs> Kaylee Kuko, uh, it's gonna be s s smart board. I walk is gonna be our kid when we when we meet finally. Okay. Wow. So if they were gonna send products the whole time, I'm gonna name my kid chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Hershey's. That's Reese's. what I want. I'm gonna be so fat. <laughs> if this starts becoming like a trend. Oh my I god. Think, oh, All it used, celebrities it was with like stupid so child yeah. names. Oh my god. Yeah. Just to get free stuff. It's like violence, and that people should learn from his mistakes. I think the biggest shock is that Chris Brown still has fans. Not just because of what he's done, but because he's a garbage person with minimal talent at best. What do you guys think? Should he be allowed to, in the country to perform in Australia? Would you take advice from Chris Brown about domestic violence? Taking advice from, from Chris Brown mm. for domestic violence is absolutely asinine to me. That's Sounds like, like a great <laughs> A plan, right? Like, I just yeah. think like I understand that he needs to move on, but like giving advice about it I think it's just pushing it a little bit. He's like, so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. That's my only comment. That's He's annoying. Me. I feel like taking advice of him is going to the bathroom and reading what's on the wall and taking that as wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I'll give Chris Brown is the man can dance. Okay, I'll give him that. I don't, I'm not a big fan of his other, of his music though. I'm really mm. not. I don't know. He just started. He starts mm. slipping for me. And I like just when like, he features in other people. Yeah, yeah I can more see than that. like his own things. Yeah. I think I would like to say. Yeah, I don't really listen to him. No, no. I don't it's know. But going back on the domestic violence thing, I w I wouldn't take advice from. No. It's like listening mm -hmm. like Ray Rice about or or uh, Adrian Peterson about parenting advice. You know, I I just <laughs> want to listen to him because you know not mm -hmm. the, the best things. Mm -hmm. Or uh, yeah, so I. I, don't, I, I mean, should he be allowed in the country, though? Um, mm, I don't really, like, have a problem I with mean, that. I mean, it's a Yeah. His, I understand, but his career is his music. And yeah. I feel like if he does have fans in Australia, he should be allowed to go there and perform. Yeah, I mean, they should put, like, security on him. <laughs> make sure Rihanna's not in the country at the same, that's mm -hmm. a rule. Rihanna can't be in the same country as Chris Brown. Uh, you know, it doesn't care if it's on one side or the other side. Or she's in the middle of the desert. Can't happen. I mean, you know, I you know. honestly... I don't care that he, like, he, I just, I, he has so much money. Like, do you really need to go to Australia and have a tour there? Like, That's true. Honestly, look at his Lamborghini. <laughs> Probably has yeah. multiple. That's so yeah. annoying. Probably. Does he destroy one, like, just for fun? Oh, absolutely. Probably. I would imagine so. I, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, I would really imagine He's so. He's careless. Well, that's all the news we have here on Hollywood. Here's what's bothering Valerie this week. Thanks, guys. I'm Valerie, and here's what's bothering me this week. This coming weekend is homecoming, and instead of ranting about it like I normally would, I decided to give you guys some tips so you don't embarrass yourselves this year. First on the agenda, drinking. Do not get out of control, you guys. We don't need another riot. I get it, we all wanna have fun, but do not be that person at a party. Know your limits and stick to them. Make sure you eat a good protein-filled meal before you drink. Kegs and eggs, anyone? And have water throughout the night. And for Pete's sake, if you see someone who is too drunk, help them out. This goes for both guys and girls. Next on the agenda, clothing. Make sure to check out the Oak Grove as well as Twitter and Facebook to see where shirts are being sold this year. Buy a t-shirt and support not only your school, but many of the organizations that are selling them. And finally, wear to party. Avoid frat houses at all costs. It's almost a guarantee they will get busted. And if you are underage, you will absolutely get fined. If you're over 21, you will probably be blamed for the amount of alcohol people are drinking because you can't prove that you did not buy it and you will face a hefty fine. Stick to bars or low-key house parties. And for the love of God, do not put the location of your party on any social media. It will get busted and it will be your fault. And one last thing, please avoid butt chugging this weekend at all costs. Nobody needs a natty light enema, just unnecessary. Well guys, have a great homecoming and stay safe. Here's Mary with your weekly advice. Thanks, Valerie. I got a few new letters this week, so let's take a look. Dear Mary, my name is Nicole from Georgia, and I'd like to get close to my dad. Time is running out, and I feel like we barely know each other. After my parents' divorce, things between us were just never the same. 
He barely calls me or is interested in my schoolwork, my job, and basically my entire life. I know the phone works both ways, but I can just never get myself to call him because I feel it's his responsibility to kind of mend things between us. I just want him to show that he cares about me in some way, shape, or form. Am I being unreasonable? How do I get him to show that he cares? Well, Nicole, from personal experience, I think the best way to figure out how much your father truly loves you is to text him and tell him you're pregnant. His reaction will be a test as to how much he genuinely cares about you. When I used this tactic with my father by telling him I was pregnant, he replied several days later saying, new phone, who dis? I then replied telling him it was his daughter and he asked, which one? I'm an only child, or so I thought. But anyways, huh, this is about me. This is about you, not me. Here's an analogy. It's kind of like when you break up with your boyfriend. Their response is what makes you know if you made the right decision. So if you break up with them and they cry and fight back for you, they obviously care about you. If they shrug their shoulders, they're probably just relieved that you did the dumping so they didn't have to. If your dad really loves you, he'll probably freak out, have a panic attack, and then angrily pick up the phone to call you for the first time in six months. And a phone call for a fake pregnancy is better than no call at all, am I right? Dear Mary, my name is Ashley from Maryland. So I fell in love this summer with the most amazing man I have ever met. His name is Mark, but he goes by DJ Mayo. He has a great future ahead of him and I can't wait to be a part of it. This entire summer we spent every night together on the beach after 11 p.m. because it's the only time we can truly be together without anyone else. The one night he even surprised me with my favorite milkshake from McDonald's and it was only half drank. I've just never had a guy treat me as good as DJ Mayo does. The one and only thing that's wrong with our perfect relationship is that he's 21 and I accidentally told him I was 18. I'm really 15. I hit puberty early and grew boobs when I was 12. Should I tell him my real age? Do you think he'll be understanding? Help me figure out what I should do so I won't lose the man of my dreams. Well, Ashley, while I'm so happy that you're madly in love, you are allowing the man of your dreams to commit a felony. This is sagatory rape. No, satiratory rape. Saturation rape. No. Sag Sagittarius. Stationary. Salutation. Salutarian? Okay, well, whatever the hell it's called, bottom line is you're involved with rape. If he truly loves you, which I doubt, age will remain just a number, and he can always give you a call from prison. Good luck, Ashley. Dear Mary, since I'm away at college, my mom sends me packages with food items, necessities, and random things she thinks are funny. In the latest package, I received six cups of noodles, ranch dressing, a bag of chips, cookies, and a, and a few other things. So just last week, I had a salad and thought I'd have some ranch. For some reason, the dressing tasted funny, so I ended up throwing out my salad. Later that night, as I was studying, the late night food craving started, and I opened the bag of chips, and they were so stale that I nearly chipped a tooth off. Confused, I grabbed the cookies and went into my room. As Soon as I opened the cookies, there was an explosion of crumbs and chocolate chips everywhere. They were completely smushed and broken and not even worth the hassle of trying to eat. I began inspecting all of the items my mother sent me and noticed the cup of noodles were over a year expired. The ranch dressing was nine months expired and all the snacks were expired too. The only conclusion I can come up with is that my mother is trying to poison me and I want revenge. Please help me, Sarah. Oh, Sarah, do I have a revenge plan for you? So there is this website, shitexpress.com. They literally send poop to whoever. An annoying coworker, a pesky school teacher, your ex-boyfriend, or in this case, a mother who is trying to poison you. All you do is choose the animal whose species you would like to send, give them the address, pay using PayPal or Bitcoin, and voila! Your smelly package will soon be on its way to ruin someone's day. Thanks guys, have a great week, and as always, stay beautiful, Indiana.